since him being boxed in with the NES, Mario was without a doubt the most popular gaming mascot. So, of course, Nintendo kept him in mind at all times and played around with what they could do with him. Don't take that out of context. During the SNES era, they were experimenting with him in different genres, including racing, puzzlers, and even a rail shooter. One genre they tried was the RPG. This was risky, so we teamed up with RPG expert Squaresoft, now known as Square Enix, to develop its new direction, and the Super Mario RPG Legend of Seven Stars was born. It was a success. So naturally, they decided to continue Mario in his RPG state, and two series were created to help keep the trend going. Mario and Luigi, and Paper Mario. Hi all, it's Trey Gamer CA here, and welcome to my new series of editorials called Overviews and Retrospects. Give it out of here, we don't, we don't, you know. Because yeah, I'm going to be doing more than just Let's Plays. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this, I even wrote a script. <laughs> um, today, we're going to be looking at the Paper Mario series, one of my favorite RPG series of all time. And, for the first part, we're going to be looking at the first two installments. You know, the fan favorites. Hold up, I need to read your minds real quick. <laughs> yep, I had a feeling you were wondering that. Why is Mario Paper? Well, back when they were developing the sequel to the first Mario RPG, they decided to take it to Nintendo 64. Or specifically, the Nintendo 64 disk drive, but if you know anything about the disk drive, then you know why I would it didn't finish it on there. Due to the shift to the 3D capabilities of Nintendo 64, they decided to see how can they make it as big as possible while still being nice to look at. One developer, possibly Naohito Ayama, made this image of 2D sprites in a 3D world. Like a pop-up book. And yep, everything's a paper now. But enough about development, let's talk about the game themselves. I have them all right here. <laughs> I got. Uh, uh, wait, 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 I think I'm missing one. I think I'm missing one. M missing one. Don't worry. I have it on Virtual Console. Anyways, I really wish I could be talking about the sequel first, but since, well, since I played it first. <laughs> but well, first of the series, it's first, so first is the first one, and you know. Probably should have done that. Let's get started! Let's check out that intro. We started a slideshow play showcasing a place known as Star Haven, which holds a relic known as the Star Rod, a powerful witch granting object that, if in the wrong hands, can wreak havoc on absolutely everything. Hey, looky, an old hag is taped on the screen. Did anybody review this game before we released it? Oh no, Bowser comes in, easily steals the Star Rod, and turns the Star Elder guys into playing cards. And on Nintendo's past, of course. Now Bowser has infinite power, kills Mario, brainwashes Peach to love him, takes over all of reality, and proclaims himself to be God. The end. Mario's house, seeing the green skinny person that I forgot existed, read a letter to the one and only Mario himself that says the one and only Mario himself is invited by Peach to a special event at the castle. So him and green thing, did you know that the fountain statue in Super Mario 64 that says L is real 2401 is sometimes thought to hint that Luigi was going to appear on this game. Apparently those numbers seemingly match Pip Mario's release date, and, well, yeah, Luigi's in the game, alright? Yes, I know what the green thing is. He's not official, but it's the only one that makes the most sense. Now where was I? Oh yeah, Mario and Lu uh, Green Thing go to the party, and Mario and Peach go off to have some lovely, lovely time in secret. <laughs> Don't tell her that you may or may not have explored her room earlier, just like in the last game. And boom comes the Bowser. He apparently built an entire fortress, either secretly or wished it to happen, underneath the castle or lifted into orbit. 
Bowser then challenges Mario to a duel. Then Bowser grants himself infinite power, kills Mario, pretty much as Peach to love him, takes over all of reality, and proclaims himself to be God. The end. No. Mario somehow survived that fall, recovers with the help of hospitality and the spirits of the star spirits. Yeah, the spirit spirit. You know, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure that fall would have making him a two-dimensional underground way past the point of recovery. Anyways, who was it again that rescued us? <gasps> oh my gosh, it's a Goomba, it's gonna kill us! Oh wait, they're just a regular family living in the woods. It's nice that this game introduces us to the fact that all the normal Mario enemies, which we usually stomp on without thinking twice, are not all part of Bowser's army. Heck, you even get to fight alongside some of them, like the Koopa, a bomb, Paracoopa, Boo, Sparky, Cheep Cheep, Blackitu, and even the son of a Goomba family that helped you. He idolizes you and wants to help. You leave his village, which I use loosely because it's just one house and an inn, to put the kid in danger and find some real bad Goombas. And a twerp whose goal for the rest of the game is to kill you! Head back to the capital of the Mushroom Kingdom, Toad Town, to head to a place known as Shooting Star Summit, and is told to rescue the seven star spirits to counteract the Star Rod's power. And thus the RPG Collector's Quest begins, and a start to a really fun adventure. I really like this game. Anybody that likes Super Mario RPG should love this game. It has the platforming and puzzles on the overworld, and has the battle integrated action commands too. Battling numbers are simpler, making it easier to keep track, like being single or rarely double digits instead of multiples of tens or hundreds. Your characters, the NPCs, and the environments and the storylines are all very memorable. You explore a vast desert, help ghosts from being eaten, you find a secret hideout made out of playthings, and even play with adorable baby Yoshis. You just can't beat baby Yoshis! Did you know that Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to have Mario ride an animal companion ever since the completion of the original Super Mario Bros? Because of technical limitations, it had to be put off until the SNES was made. I also love how they fleshed out a Bowser kidnaps Peach story. After each chapter, you get to see what's going on with Peach as you make her stealth around the castle. You also meet Twink, a rookie wish-granting star, who pretty much acts like a messenger between Mario and Peach until you get everything you need to defeat Bowser. My biggest problem with this game is, why isn't Bowser doing anything the entire game? Sherry employs his top dogs and other guys to guard with star spirits and cause a little mayhem. But why isn't he taking over the Mushroom Kingdom? Why isn't he brainwashing Peach? Why doesn't he wish Mario to spontaneously combust? This could have been easily answered by something like maybe making the Star Rod having some self-awareness and try to resist some of Bowser's commands, or Bowser being just too dumb to make full use of the Star Rod's potential. I'm guessing the truth is the latter. I'll tell you what though, finally getting all the Star Spirits coming up there and firing a laser at his face after all he put you through is a good feeling. And if getting sweet revenge is not challenging enough for you, you can take on the sensei of a Toe Town Dojo named the Master for a harder fight. Did you know that the Master is the only Toad in all the Mario games that you can fight? Another complaint I have about this game is, well, your fastest mode of transportation. Spinning around over and over. It just looks stupid. Some people say this game is pretty easy all the way through. But I'd say that I will admit, I got stuck at a few couple of the bosses while playing this. I shouldn't have had trouble. I shouldn't have had trouble. I've beaten the sequel in Super before I played this. Huh? I know this look. All in all, Paper Mario is a really great game that I highly recommend. It's a good way to introduce children to the RPG genre, it's time well spent for casual gamers, RPG fans may like it for its laid-backness, and 
Mario fans will suck it up for all its offerings. The only regret of playing this game was that since I played its sequel, Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door first, it had this nagging impression that I was just playing a watered-down version of that game. So I had to remind myself, no crap, that game came out after this game and took everything that made this game good and made it even better. On the subject of a sequel now. Paper Mario and a Thousand Year Door. Really, just not a game to you. Four years after the original. Did you know? That the original Paper Mario game was released in China on the IQ player just one month before its sequel was released in Japan? Why, thank you, Did you know Thing, for interrupting my introduction to one of my most favorite games of all time. <laughs> I will cut you. We start off with an epic telling of an old metropolis that mysteriously got destroyed in some unnatural catastrophe. It shows that hundreds of years later, civilization was built on top of the ancient ruins in the form of a town called Rogueport. Rougeport. I call it Rougeport. And gets pretty popular due to talk of ancient treasure, including ones that's sleeping behind a giant sealed door. In case you're wondering, yes, this is the oh so thousand year door we keep speaking of. For some reason, Peach is visiting the town, and Toadsworth lets his eyes off of her for just a few seconds. And she meets this old merchant that has a box with the map to find the oh so thousand year door. But it's locked by a seal that can only be broken by someone with a pure heart. So now we get a familiar scene where Luigi, er, I mean green thing that I didn't know was a thing, read to our great hero Mario a letter from Peach that she found a treasure map, and she wants Mario to find it for her. So Mario heads off to Rouge Port, becomes a hub of the world for this game. Excuse me, I, I want to talk about this place more. <laughs> In the last game, we have the hub world was the capital of the Mushroom Kingdom, Toad Town. And it was beautiful, luscious, and very, very upbeat and up cute. Now we have a complete opposite. This place is a rundown town with graffiti and litter all over the place. And you can gamble, blow up walls, and there's even a standby gang war going on between the East Side Hoodlums and the West Side Pianta Mafia. Kids. So anyways, turns out she's been kidnapped, again, but not by Bowser, but by an evil organization known as the X-Knots. They want to open the Thousand Year Door and use whatever behind it to take over the world. Turns out you need the seven crystal stars to open the door, and thus the RPG collector quest begins, and a start of a really fun adventure. You get to fight dragons, get raped, gamble, fight in a league, get tentacle raped, Twice, go to a pub, solve mysteries on a luxury train, go on a pirate adventure, get stranded on a dangerous island, get robbed, think about delicious bacon, and so much more. There are even more post-game content in here than in the last game. For example, the Pit of 100 Trials, an unforgiving descent of a bunch of fights with great prizes and an extremely tough boss at the end. I remember my most recent playthrough, I beat the game and got myself ready to begin my hour-long journey into that abyss. I got equipped the attack, the best attack and healing items in the game. I got my stats way up high. I even equipped the best badges for the situations I'll face down there. I, I even like did accepted the quest where you have to like blow up to a hole in like level 50. <laughs> 
Anyways, I never beaten it before, and I was ready this time. I got myself down to like the mid 70s, like 40 minutes in. Uh, the challenge is got like from piss poor, or easy to kill enemies to like somewhat manageable. <laughs> it looked bright ahead for me. I was gonna beat it. I was gonna finally beat it. <laughs> but uh, it was a little sun. It was sunny outside, but more windy than usual. <laughs> Uh, but not enough to cause any mischief, right? <laughs> Split second power outage! <laughs> you can't save. That's one thing. You can't save in the pit if you die or somehow lose power like that. You have to do the whole entire thing over again. <laughs> you guys think of this. Nothing it doesn't even know if you turned it off to cheat or legit. <laughs> this is worse than Mr. Rossetti from Animal Crossing. <laughs> I just like, I made some so sweet because of that. If I ever do or somehow try to do that Pit of Hundred Trials again on that game, I might do a live stream on it. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. This game also has a very deep and interesting lore. You can talk to this guy and he'll tell you the legends. Ever want to know what's up with those black chests that curse you? What about the origin of crystal stars? Why the Thousand Year Door was made? What caused that calamity anyway? Why isn't there a pit of hundred trials? Another cool thing is that Luigi is going on his own adventure, which involves him saving a princess in a faraway kingdom. If Nintendo did make DLC for the GameCube, and his adventure was DLC for this game, <laughs> I'd so buy. Wait, 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 I don't know who this green thing guy ever is. Yeah. If I had to say which one was better, I'd say this one because, as I said it a million bajillion times already, it took everything that made the original good and stepped it up. It felt more adventurous. I liked some of the partners more. It's a little more difficult. It has a longer post game. It's smoother, smarter, and more clever. I'm sorry about the Disney you know thing. Pop up during my foot stuff, but I think I scared him a little too much. I'm ashamed because he kind of pointed out like all the censoring in this game and how XXX could be named to be a foreshadowing to a double crossing. <laughs> and also how all the partners from the past game was supposed to here in this game, not just two. But sorry, we're out of time. I don't care if you drag my other one or anything. Well, I can only review two this episode. Oh, but I'll check out the other next time. So, like if you like, share if you want to show others, comment if you want to say something. And until next time, I want to try to drag that. Come here. Get out of the corner. Not again, not again, not again! Yeah, 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 y